Hi, I'm Sam Slater from Chelsea and today I've been joined by Neil Birrell who runs the Premier Diversified Growth Fund. Hi Neil. Hi. So Premier Diversified Growth Fund is a multi-asset fund which means you can invest in absolutely any asset in the world which is tens of thousands of different things. How do you go about narrowing that down to just 80 to 150 holdings? Well, first of all, we need a big team, and there's 10 of us in total do this, and I head up the asset allocation. That means our specialist investment teams across the various asset classes. We broadly split them up into fixed income, equities, property, and alternatives. So it's a collegiate approach to asset allocation, and the teams go away, and they undertake the investments into the individual asset classes. So it's a lot of specialists doing what they do day by day, just pulling it all together in one multi-asset fund. Okay. And the fund itself can have, a, or it must have, a minimum of 40% in equities and a maximum of 85%. Have you ever been to either of those extremes? No, that's for the investment association sector, uh, the 40-85 sector, um, which isn't a constraint for us. Uh, we, we do have more internal limits as well, uh, which is 40% uh, of the low side and 75% of the high side in terms of equity exposure. Practically over time, we've been between 58 and 66, and th that's over the last six years, so it, it's a much tighter range. Uh, we believe it's appropriate to have a big mix of assets in a multi-asset fund to diversify risk and also to provide opportunity. And you've got about a third of the portfolio in UK equities at the moment. Is that quite a bold allocation given the uncertainty around Brexit? Well, it's a good point. It, it's a third of the equity exposure, which is pretty significant, and around about a fifth of the, the overall portfolio. Now, um, it's an important one, this. I mean, clearly Brexit's a, a, a very important um, issue. Uh, the UK economy is fundamentally not in great shape, and the current data is sort of rather disappointing. What we're trying to do is to take idiosyncratic risk in our UK equity exposure. You know, for example, we've got some uh, interesting positions in the, uh, in the gaming industry. Uh, we've got four little positions in it across Codemasters, Team 17, uh, Frontier and, uh, and Sumo. Um, it's a massive industry, the, uh, the computer gaming industry. In fact, uh, I think as USA Today has recently said, they think it's going to be worth in the region of $185 billion in 2021. Right. We also hold B&M stores and Gym Group, which are discount players in gyms and, uh, and the retail market. Mm -hmm. And they theoretically benefit in a weaker economic environment as people, people trade down. Right, OK. And you've just got... 3% in emerging markets, which is uh, on, the, on the small side, perhaps yeah. many people might think. Why is that? Globally, outside the UK, we're simply trying to find the best companies that we can invest in. So therefore, we don't mind too much where they are. However, emerging markets are a long-term sort of growth story. Uh, interestingly, we've got one company called Osnutria, which is actually a Dutch company, but it's listed in Hong Kong, which counts as Asia as opposed to emerging markets. Uh, that manufactures uh, baby formula milk that it sells entirely into China. So whilst you wouldn't think that was automatically an emerging markets play, it is. Okay. Also, we've got larger holdings, the likes of Prudential in the UK and Citigroup in the States, big financial businesses who have also got very significant exposure in emerging markets. So it's greater than the original number that you mentioned actually looks. And the fund can also invest in alternative fixed income. Could you explain what you mean by alternative fixed income? Since 2008, the, the way banks have lent to, to particularly smaller and medium-sized enterprises has changed very, very significantly. Uh, there's a lot of industries with a huge demand for, for capital and the banks have stopped lending to them. So a whole bunch of new lenders have sort of grown up. One example would be via pharma credit, which lends to uh, the life sciences uh, industry. Another one would be SQN asset finance, and that lends to a wide range of injuries, such as the solar industry, waste disposal, that type of thing. So it's, it's alternative lending rather than what the banks used to do. You can also invest in hedge funds. Can you also explain what they are and how you might use them in the portfolio? Yeah, I mean, hedge funds are a pretty emotive phrase, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, there's... Uh, there's many, many types of hedge funds. It's a huge universe from sort of the highly, uh, highly leveraged ones through to ones that are very unleveraged, through to ones that are taking sort of very, very specialist ones, taking big positions, through to um, very diverse ones. We absolutely focus on those that are looking to preserve, preserve capital. So in other words, ones that will do well in periods of, of market downturns, ones that actually benefit quite a lot from market volatility. And that tends to be the type of thing that comes through when, when markets sort of sell off. So this is all about diversification. It's all about low risk hedge funds as opposed to higher risk aggressive hedge funds. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more information on the Premier Diversified Growth Fund, please go to chelseafs.co.uk.